still examining the survivors of the damaged freighter. Looks like it goes by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Only one survivor, placed in the Coltal tank for recovery. The carbon scoring on the vessel suggests it was in a battle, but no indication of who fired on it. Couldn't get much from the Nava computer. I'm surprised the ship was able to make it inside the Paragus asteroid field without the asteroid drift charts. Aside from the lone survivor, we recovered an old woman. No life signs. There was also a protocol droid and a utility droid on board, sent both down to maintenance while security sorts through the other items on the ship. It looks like the utility droid, a T3 unit, was able to get the ship working enough to get to the colony. We're prepared to... Could be a Jedi, but we won't know for sure until we get the transmission back from the Republic. If the survivor is a Jedi, that would account for the recovery rate. But I'm more concerned that a Jedi here may cause trouble. Some of the miners, especially Korta, are already st Another accident today. A detonation in the ventilation tunnels. If the lockdown measures hadn't activated, the whole facility would have been destroyed. Got most of the injured to the Kulto tanks in time, but the rest had to go to the morgue. One of the wounded said a droid caused the accident, but we couldn't get any specifics. Miners about the Jedi. A number of the droids have been acting oddly, and not even memory wipes seem to be fixing the problem. There was a detonation in another one of the fuel vents the droids were working in. We deactivated several of them and moved them down to maintenance, but we're still treating the plasma burns. That cuts us down to almost half shifts, and with the droids malfunctioning, we may not make the Telo shipment for this month. Fortunately, the detonation didn't cause a lockdown. Warning, there has been a fuel detonation in the mining tunnels. Emergency lockdown commencing. All personnel report to quarters and prepare for emergency venting countermeasures. No, if the ventilation systems are malfunctioning, evacuate the medical bay, everyone evacuate. Still examining the survivors of the damaged freighter. Looks like it goes by the name of the Ebon. Only one survivor. Couldn't, aside from, it looks like the. Still examining the survivors of the, only one, couldn't get, aside from, it looks like.
Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one, or perhaps you have been trained for such things. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Colto tank about you. How do you feel? I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Your ship was attacked. You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. I do not know. Why did they spare you? Indeed, a Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. And so do you. Perhaps we could discuss it at length later on. Now we have other concerns, among them finding our new enemy. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here I will remain and attempt to center myself.
It, but it is sealed, strange. In my visions, it was open. Especially you, Corder. Listen up, because I'm not gonna say this again. The next one of you Juma heads to try and smuggle a blaster, or so help me, any sort of military-grade frag weapons into my facility is gonna take a long walk out the airlock. Why? Because in case you forgot, Paragian fuel explodes at high temperatures. That's what blasted that chunk out of Paragus II and created this asteroid field. So if I catch any of you with anything other than sonic charges or mining lasers, I'll burn you and your contract. Security out. And according to one of the miners, it was because one of the sonic charges went off prematurely. And like before, it was one set by a mining droid. The three idiots were grouped so close to the charge, it might as well have been a grenade going off. The blast turned their bones to dust. The blast wrecked the internal components of the droid that set the charge, though, so we can't even dissect it to see what happened. I don't like what's going on here. Ever since that Jedi showed up, things are getting worse. It's not just Korda and his miners, or the fights, but now the droids are acting crazy. If we don't find what's causing this, or who, this facility's gonna be space dust by the time the next Helos freighter arrives. So, you're in maintenance. Then maybe you can tell me what's going on with these droids. Sir, I don't know. It's like their behavior cores are undergoing binary decay, but I can't find the source. This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's reassuring. It isn't happening. So the next time we nearly have a breach in the ventilation tunnels, I could just close my eyes and pretend it's my imagination. You better give me some answers. I want to know the damage these droids can do if they start mining us instead of asteroid rock. Sir... These droids aren't combat models. Their mining lasers are weaker and less accurate than blasters. I doubt those droids could even hit one of us. Are you blind? What about the miners in Medbay? It's sabotage, and it started right after the commander said we weren't going to sell the Jedi to the Exchange. So I want you to find out how these droids are being sabotaged. That'll tell me who's trying to clear a path to get that Jedi off the facility and stop him. In the meantime, make sure the security's armed with all the ion and sonic charges you can find. If those droids start coming after me, I'm gonna need more than low-grade mining lasers to take them down. Clear? Yes, sir. Maintenance control out. Idiot. I installed an override switch to shut down any droids on this level, just in case someone locks me out of the administration console. As added insurance, I tied the override switch into the circuit to the holding cell door. It'll make sure it can only be opened if all droids in the level are shut down. I doubt Corda or any of his men have the skill to pull off something like this, but I'm not taking any chances while we're sitting in the middle of this asteroid minefield. Whoever's responsible won't be able to have the droids rescue him after I lock him up. Nothing will cut through that door. He'll be trapped. I secured the stealth field generator inside one of the footlockers in the security storage room. If I have the specs right, the interface field should be effective against the droid sensors. All I need to do is equip the belt. 
and some skill with stealth in order to use it. As long as I don't get too close to the droids, they shouldn't detect me. If any more droids start malfunctioning, the belt should buy me enough time to get to the override switch I set up in the communications blister console. I'd rather shut them down than destroy them. I want to find out how these droids are being sabotaged, maybe even turn them against whoever's sabotaging them. Be careful. There is much energy in the room beyond, yet it stems from nothing that lives. Can you not sense them? Reach out. Cast aside your sight. Cast aside what you see, and instead, reach out with your perceptions. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive, but the small oscillations of energy, that you can feel, echoing outwards. fate, but it is there. It is the force you feel. It has not been so long as for you to forget. Do not turn away from it. Listen. Feel it echoing within you. Come. I shall guide you down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place.
beyond this door, someone yet lives. Be mindful. His thoughts are difficult to read. But you have nothing to fear from this one, and he might yet prove useful. Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniforms while I've been in here? You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See. Some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion. I was sitting here for a long time. Then you showed up in your underwear and things got a lot better. Don't know much about it. Maybe the exchange wants one as a trophy or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. I guess. There's rumors all over space about it. All I heard was Revan returned to pay Malak back for trying to kill her in the first place. You know women. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Look, not like your half-naked interrogation isn't a personal fantasy of mine, but... Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? The miners can't all be gone. But if they are... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. Huh? What are you talking about? Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. All right, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated. So it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. Thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure pizzack. The console's ours. Now all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and... Hey! This system's been severed from the main hub, after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. 
But no, someone tried to lock down this whole level tight and leave us here, trapped. I doubt it. All we have is communications back, for all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. We could try, but if the miners were trying to trap you up here and probably kill you, why not call them and chat? I don't think a friendly call is going to wake them up. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Tracked at the freighter in. Was lucky it wasn't destroyed when it drifted into the asteroid field. Not much on board. One damaged droid, one annoying protocol droid, and a lot of bodies. Sent the survivor to medical and the others to the morgue. Didn't recognize the ship's ID code, so we transmitted it to the Republic for some answers. Questioned the protocol droid about what happened. Says his master, the survivor, I guess, was on the Republic ship, the Harbinger, when it suffered an engine failure. He says the survivor was a passenger on the vessel and a Jedi. If so, that's gonna mean true. Inventoried the bodies and cargo. Everything matches the protocol droid's story. The T3 droid had seized up, so we left it in storage and standby mode. Don't know what code will access it. It could be its voice activated for all we know. We put the protocol droid to work in maintenance, sorting the mining droid comm routines and updating the recognition sensors. Man, to shut him up. When the survivor recovers, hopefully we can get him off this station before there's a... Trouble between the work shifts. Word of the Jedi leaked out and the miners aren't sure what to do with her. Corda's mining crew wanted us to collect the creds for the bounty the exchange has on Jedi, but I put a stop to that. We're contacting Telos to get the Republic records on the Jedi, but nobody will... No word from the Republic, but I've sent out a broadcom transmission for records on this Ebon Hawk. One of the miners said it used to be a smuggling vessel. Accidents are making the miners restless. The droid behavior course must be undergoing some kind of binary decay. Two miners were drilled by a droid's mining laser, and those blasts in the ventilation tunnels nearly caused the whole facility to blow.